the state of your data is of extreme importance. And so making sure that the status of your NAS is safe and healthy is key in protecting your crucial files. But do you really want to have to log in and check up on your system frequently just to ensure that everything is as it should be? Maybe not. And this is why QNAP implements notifications to keep you updated on your system. And now QNAP has compiled all of the notifications into one convenient app, Notification Center. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the types of notifications you can set and how to set a notification. Start by opening the Notification Center. If you haven't set any rules yet, a window will pop up prompting you to set up notification rules. But to start, let's take a look at the different types of notifications we can set up from the overview page. In the overview section on the left-hand side, you'll see the system notification rules, which include options for event notifications or alert notifications. Event notifications include events from various apps and features on the NAS, whereas alerts include warnings and errors with the QNAPNAS. This could include things like fake login attempts, disk warnings, or network issues like a disconnected adapter, among other things. Now, on the right-hand side of the overview section, you can see various ways in which you can receive notifications, including email, SMS, which is basically a protocol to receive alerts via text message, instant messaging, which gives you the options of either Skype messages or Facebook messages, and push service, which works in conjunction with QNAP's app, Q Manager, available for iOS and Android devices. For this video, I'll first assign alert notifications to be emailed to me. So start by opening the settings of the type of notification that you're setting up. Next, click the Create Rule button. Now you can choose what type of event you would like to trigger this rule with. The default is for warnings and errors, and that is what I'm going to leave as. You can also customize your rules a bit by implementing keyword filters, for example, requiring certain words to be either included or excluded in the event's notification in order to trigger the rule. If you would like to implement this type of filtering, just click the drop-down menu and rather than leaving the all messages option selected, choose either includes or excludes. Click the addition icon and type in what you would like included or excluded. In addition, you also have the option to create a time window for when notifications may occur. You can do this by checking the time range box and inputting the time range that you would like notifications to occur. You can also check another box to be notified if log entries begin to be generated at a certain rate. Once you've made your selections, click Next. On this page is where you will determine which method you would like to receive these notifications by. I'm just going to use email for my method here. To do this, start by selecting an email account to send the notifications to. If your email service isn't listed in the drop-down menu, you can select Custom to input your email server information manually. However, I'm just using Gmail, which is listed right here. Now, input the email address and your credentials and click Allow. Now, input the email address to receive the notifications. Once you have input all the appropriate information, click Next to move on. Now, you will see a summary page. Simply click Finish and your notification job will be set. You'll be able to see this job under System Notification Rules. As you can see, I have one alert notification rule active. However, if you want to turn the rule off, it's easy to do so without deleting the whole rule. Just click the toggle under the status section to turn the rule on or off. Additionally, if you need to go back to edit a rule, simply click the edit icon. Now let's try setting up a push notification. I'm going to start by clicking the settings button under push service. In order to use the push service, you'll need to make sure you have the MyQNAP cloud set up. So I'll just click on the link provided here. Now click Get Started and click Start. Either use an already existing QNAP ID or click Create QNAP ID to create a new one. In the prompter, input a nickname, your email, and a password for the QNAP ID. 
you can then just confirm your registration from the email that is sent out. Now that the NAS is set up on my QNAP cloud, I can set up the push notifications from the mobile app queue manager. Touch the refresh button to search for QNAPs on the network. Select the NAS you want to apply your settings to. Then enter the correct user credentials. It will ask you if you want to enable notifications. Select yes. Turn on notifications. Select yes again. Now, Q Manager will be paired with the NAS you selected. Meanwhile, back in the notification center, you can see that we have a new push service active. You can also filter your notifications in the global notification settings. Here you can see that you can edit both the type of notification and the application. So for instance, if I want to disable App Center notifications from SMS and push service, I can just uncheck the appropriate boxes and click apply to lock in my decision. Receiving notifications is an easy way to maintain the integrity of your data stored on the QNAP NAS without having to frequently check on it manually. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos to better utilize your QNAP NAS.